Today, I wanted to do a deep dive into multicolor 3D printing. Everything from how this technology works to changing color schemes, all the way to how you can make your own custom multicolor 3D print projects. When you think of multicolor 3D printing, you probably think of Bamboo Lab machines, so they are the ones that I'm going to be using in this video, but a decent amount of the setup and software is similar across the board for other multicolor capable printers, so hopefully regardless of what machine that you have, this video will be helpful. That being said though, if if you are someone that's been looking at getting into multicolor 3D printing, then now is an excellent time to do so. Bamboo Lab is currently running an incredible sale on all of their machines as well as everything else too actually. I bought myself way too much filament this morning. If you've spent any amount of time on the 3D printer side of the internet, then you've probably heard how incredible the Bamboo Lab machines are, but hopefully in this video you will also see some more examples of exactly what these printers are capable of creating. So if you are watching this video when it's vaguely being posted, then the link to all the sale info and everything will be listed below. But now let's get into how you can utilize this technology to its fullest potential. Let's start off with how exactly multicolor 3D printing works. Multicolor 3D printers are equipped with an automatic material system or AMS for short, which means they can use multiple filaments to print objects with different colors seamlessly. The AMS units hold several spools of filament and can automatically switch between them during printing. When a color change is required, the AMS unloads the current filament, loads the new one, and purges any leftover material to prevent blending, ensuring the colors remain crisp and clean on your prints. For the machines that I'll be using in this video, the A1 can print in up to four colors with its AMS light, and the X1C can print in up to 16 colors thanks to being able to connect up to four AMS units. Although I've only got two set up on mine, so I've got eight possible colors to work with at a time. The AMS units also mean that you can swap between different materials on a single print, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to be focusing on the multicolor aspect. We're going to start off at the absolute beginning and work our way up in terms of difficulty and complexity for multicolor printing. And so the first step is how do you even take a model from the internet and get it printing in multicolor? When you go to a website like Maker World, which is Bamboo Lab's own model hosting website, you'll of course come across a whole lot of really awesome files that you could possibly look at printing. Now, not every single one of these is going to be a multicolor 3D print, but given that this is is Bamboo Lab's own file hosting website. And all of the printers are multicolor capable. If you have an AMS, then there are a ton of already pre-colored models here. One that I'm going to use as an example for this is actually something I'm currently working on printing. And that is the Kessel Sabak card game. The particular model is in multiple parts. So you have the cards themselves and you also have the card holder. On the side here, you have different print profiles for various machines. And down here, you can just click on one and have it automatically open in Bamboo Studio. If you're on the phone app, then you can literally just send it to the printer, but I'm gonna be focusing on the computer. All of the multicolor print files you'll find online are .3MF files. These are a reasonably standard type of 3D model file. They're not a file type specific to Bamboo Lab or 3D printers, but the reason all multicolor print files are 3MF files, as opposed to something like an STL or OBJ, is 3MF files can store more information. When it comes to multicolor 3D printing, it means that the 3D model can import into the slice software with all of the colors pre-painted onto it. 3MF files can also retain specific print settings, which can come in handy if designers have made specific adjustments to best suit the models when printing. Ultimately though, any saved information that's part of a 3MF file can be modified to your preferred specifications. Now I already have this model downloaded on my computer, so I am just going to double click on that, which is going to open Bamboo Studio. Here you can see the card file includes three different build plates worth of prints. You have the red Red cards, the yellow cards, and then the Psylops cards. Now these cards are very color specific, so I don't want to mess with the coloring on them whatsoever. So from here, as long as my printer is listed as the one that I want to send this to, as well as the build plate, and the filaments all pretty much match up, then I can just press slice plate and it will do its thing. So this particular plate is only using three colors, white, red, and black. You can see on the side here how it gives you a breakdown of exactly how much of each filament color it's using as well as how much it's purging. Because these are flat prints, it's really not too bad for changing the filament color. It's only doing it 17 times. So that means it's pretty minimal in terms of waste. I'm gonna get into some tips and tricks for waste in a bit. Everything is good to go. So I can just press print plate. So this window here is actually specific to my printer, which is on right now. I mean, I physically can see my A1 in front of me. So even though in the slicer, it has white being in slot one, black being 
being in slot two and red being in slot four. On my machine right now, I have white in the second slot, black in the third slot, and red in the fourth slot. And if I open the AMS slot menu up, you can see there what colors I have in my printer at the moment. And the reason it can do this is if you're using a Bamboo Lab spools, the spools have RFID tags. So the machine can automatically read what filament type and color is currently in that slot. But not to worry, if you're not using Bamboo Lab filament, you can go into the settings menu and manually input the filament type and color that's going to be in that slot. Now it's not 100% necessary to manually input whatever filament you're using but it is really helpful, especially if you maybe can't remember off of the top of your head what filament color is in what slot, especially if you start looking at having an X1C or another printer that has multiple AMS units. I can barely keep track of and remember what filament colors I currently have in just four slots, not to mention eight plus. So for your own sake, it is a decent thing to get into the habit of is anytime you do input a spool that is not a Bamboo Lab filament to go into the settings and just update whatever filament and type and color you've installed into that slot. It's really fast and easy, not a big deal. And that way when you go to want to start printing something, then you can very easily select and choose the correct filament slot for whatever project you're working on. But this also could come in very handy when you want to change the colors on prints. So for this example, I'm going to be using this really cool BD1 flat model. So you can see here it prints all flat and then you put it together and you have your very own little BD1 droid. I actually already have one of these printed though in this color scheme. So I'm going to go ahead and show you now how you can very easily change the colors if you want to make adjustments. Now you can just go into the filament setting section and start messing around with the color to better visualize the adjustments that you might want to be making. But if you want to get a bit fancier than that, you can and literally have the slicer update your filament slot. So I'm gonna press resync. I have my X1 Carbon already set up to print this droid because I had a color scheme in mind. So now this list of filaments on the side here is exactly the filament type and color that is currently installed in that printer. So it's automatically changed the color scheme for this droid based on the filament color in the slot. Now I don't particularly want to have this BD unit be this gold color. And so if I want to change that particular color area, I can just select, in this case, it's color slot two from the drop down menu, and then it will bring up my list of AMS filament, and I can change that to the color that I do want it to be. So I mostly want this droid to be blue. I'm going to flip slot one now to be that gold. And the black and silver I'm okay with, but they're reversed right now. So I'm also going to change those so that areas that were pre-colored for slot number three are the silver and then slot number four is black. And there, that's looking like a pretty awesome little droid print. So now I can go ahead and slice that up and get that printing. And here is how this new BD1 print turned out. I absolutely love the metal filament that Bamboo Lab makes. That is what the blue and the gold is on this print. It is unlike any other metallic or silk filament I've ever used. So that is mostly why I decided to have this BD unit be blue was so that I had an excuse to use more of it for a droid print. But this print in general is just a great example of the refined details you can get on these machines as well as how clean that you can print in multiple colors. Something that does unfortunately go along with multicolor 3D printing is a bit more waste involved due to having to purge the filament between color changes. But there are some tricks that you can do to minimize the waste. For this example, I'm going to be using the Uga coasters that you're all absolutely obsessed with when I printed them. So you can see here we have the Bantha coaster. Now, if I sliced this particular coaster up, you can see this one coaster would involve 17 filament changes, around eight eight grams of filament flushed. There is a purge tower, which is using 1.36 grams. You know, all in all, not terrible in terms of waste, but if you're printing one coaster, you're probably interested in printing the whole set. So if we go to the other coasters here, I'm going to select three more because I know four will easily fit on the bed. So here we now have four coasters on this bed. I'm just going to get them all lined up here so that they're not touching and everything likes fitting on this build plate well. Now we have four different coasters on this build plate and if I slice this up, 
Because they are all using the same filament colors, this is not going to increase the wasted material at all. The filament only gets changed the same 17 times. It's still using the same 7.69 grams to flush between the different colors. And it still is printing all of these now four coasters with a 1.36 gram purge tower. So if you are doing a multicolor print or have multiple multicolor prints that all involve the same colors, this is a great way to minimize your waste material. Even if you don't personally care about the waste itself, you are still losing money with this wasted material, which I'm sure no one is a big fan of wasting money. So being able to minimize the waste as best as you possibly can, you can also have an object be a purge tower. Instead of using a separate purge tower, you can also set an object to be the purge tower essentially if it is a piece that you don't care about the color. It works great if you are needing to print like internal pieces for like say a droid or something if you were multicolor printing. So there are little tricks like that that can minimize the waste as well. Also it is generally considered that the flushing volumes that Bamboo Lab automatically sets are pretty conservative, like way more conservative than they need to be. The multiplier automatically is set at 1 but you can very easily set it at 0.5 and not normally see any change in terms of print quality or color bleed on prints. There is the possibility that there might be some particular filaments and colors that really do not like interacting with each other. Even if you have the multiplier set for 0.5, you can still go in and like manually adjust specific purge settings if you do realize during a print that, oh, this filament color seems to really not like interacting with this other particular one and make those manual adjustments there without increasing the waste for the other colors if everything else seems to be working out fine. So I believe that covers all of the basics in terms of how to multicolor print, but now let's get into how to create your own custom designs. One of the easiest ways to create these custom projects is with SVG files. An SVG file is basically an image file that has plot points and the slicer will read them as individual parts basically. So I have this Emphis Nest logo that I've been absolutely obsessed with and I really want to turn it into a sign for my workshop. So it's imported in here way too massive, so let's scale this down. So if you go to the objects list here, it will give you a breakdown of all of these individual parts. I'm going to delete the first part, which is normally like the surrounding box because I want this to be a cutout design. You can see here the outline of this model now. Of course, these colors are all over the place. So one second, I'm going to change all of these to be colors that they need to be. Now I did not bother changing any of the filament types, so they're all over the place. Just look at the colors for now. So from here, we of course now want to recolor this model. Up in the menu tools, there is something that looks like a paint bucket, and that is the color painting tool. Now within this, you have different types of tool. There is a circle, a sphere, a triangle, height range adjuster, fill, and gap fill. The fill tool is by far the easiest in my opinion. That is the first one that I will try to use for any of my projects and it should work out fine, you can see here. Because these are flat and very defined planes, it has no issue recognizing the different parts of this model. Up at the top are all of the different filament colors. I can select the color that I want and the area that I want that color to be and then it will just paint bucket in. So here I can continue to go through and essentially paint bucket tool all of these different areas until they match the design color that I want this print to be. And there, now we have a custom colored print project that will print out exactly like this. Now, in terms of other specifics for this model, personally, I would choose to have this be thinner probably. I want it to be a sign, so I'm going to stop it being uniform scale, and I probably don't need this to be more than four millimeters, so I'm going to decrease that. And I also want this design to be printing on the bottom, just so that it has a really nice smooth surface. I'm gonna rotate this. There we go. Need to move this up so that it doesn't interfere with those bottom lines that the machine generates. And so I'm gonna go to slice this and show you the one downside to 
creating models in this fashion, at least if you're doing like this sign idea. On the back here, you can see it has all of these little dots, which are actually seam lines because the model has basically generated the individual parts to this design all the way through. Even though it is one color, it's not reading it as if, oh, the design is only on the front side. It is reads it like all the way through. So if you go down here, you will see how it is generating like lines where the different um, design elements are on grid infill. We need to change that before I lose my mind. You can see how it's done a few little odd things here and there in terms of how it's generated this model to print, but it will still print successfully. You're just not going to have like a solid flat back, which in this particular model's case is not a big deal. Like I honestly kind of don't care what the back of this model looks like. It was so easy to take an SVG file and color in the slicer and have it look like this and it should print out like this. I mean, color specifics of filament depending, but I tried to mimic the colors that I'm going to use as closely as possible. You can also use SVGs to customize other models. So for this example, we're going to be making a custom A1 window design. So this particular file has these pre-existing logos already on them. We don't need all of these, so I'm going to delete all of them. Let's keep Gengar. So you can see from the objects list, you have the physical A1 window piece and then this part is Gengar, which we don't need Gengar. Now we are just left with the little window button. Same idea, we can go drag in this SVG file. It is once again absolutely massive. I'm gonna scale that down. So you can see it here. If we go to the side, I'm going to once again delete the surrounding square of the image. And then we have the Droid Depot logo. So I'm going to put this in the center. Now, because this is going to be on the bottom of the design, I need to mirror this or flip it around at least. Rotate this so that it's going to be printing in the right direction. Also going to center the window button We've got about what we need to have going on. I'm going to mesh boolean this SVG because I think it might help this situation, but then we're going to select both of these and merge them. I want to recolor this though. Let's sync this to my carbons filaments. Resync. There we go. I want the button to be this blue color. Then let's actually just use the paint bucket tool up here to change the color. Let's make this white. I will flip the filament later. From here, I can literally just select this and recolor it to what I want like that. It does still have that eye being the wrong color, so I can go up to the color painting tool if I select that. And I want that to match the rest of the button, which will be color two. Select that there, and then that, as you can see, should change the color of that eye. Now I'm going to merge these two objects together. It just got rid of all of my painting. That's really fun. <laughs> Not to worry, we can just recolor all of this again. I know it looks a bit crazy because it's flat and sometimes the program doesn't know what to do with that. But if we go slice plate, you can see we have a custom A1 window button now that has the Droid Depot logo. The last thing that I wanted to touch more on in this video is how to use the other color painting tools. So here I have this half colored helmet stand base that is designed to match the Night Trooper helmet. So it has this cracked gold Kitsungi look all over. It. I've actually already made one of these the traditional way, but I wanted to see if I could remake it using multicolor 3D printing. It never occurred to me just how annoying and complicated it was going to be to color this though, so it inadvertently became a great example for this video in displaying some of these other color painting tools. I found that using the sphere tool worked the best for coloring in these cracks gold. Now I highly recommend you just go in to the slicer and try out some of these color painting tools to get a better feel for them because I'm not sure how well of a verbal explanation will come across for exactly how some of these work. But essentially the sphere ends up coloring in the surfaces of the model more three-dimensionally. So in the case for these cracks, it's not only coloring in the bottom section that you probably can see more straight on for the views that I'm seeing when I'm coloring this in, it's also going up and coloring in the sides of the cracks. So it is 
very useful for these recessed areas. I am also switching back and forth between the black and the gold just to clean up some of the edges. You can actually flip between colors really easily with your keyboard. It like hot keys the corresponding number of filament color to the number pad on your keyboard. So if I want to go from using black back to gold, I can just hit the three on my keyboard. If we want or need even more control in terms of where the color is being placed, that is where the triangle tool comes into play. And this is where it will break down the model to every single face that makes up whatever model you're trying to color in. So on the stand, when I was coloring it in, it left a bit of gold around the edge between the white imperial cog and the black base. So I wanted to get rid of that and make it either black and white just to clean up the edge here. And this section was very small and delicate. And so really the only way I was able to get to that precise detail to make sure it was all the color that I wanted to was by using the triangle tool and very specifically selecting only the faces that were on this edge area. There is a point where the printer will start to smooth out some of the edges just because you can color in the model at a higher resolution than the printer itself might be able to print it at. So you can go in and just slice the file up to give yourself a print preview of how it might be handling the color changes and edges between certain parts. And once I finally got this model all colored, I sent it off to my printer to get printing. This turned out so, so cool. It saved me so much time not having to do all this gold leaf by hand. So even though this base it did take 20 hours to print, I didn't have to do any manual work myself. So I think that time was worth it. And it means that I can now just print a couple more of these if I want all of my night troopers to have the same helmet stand. Hopefully this video was helpful for anyone wanting to get more into multicolor 3D printing. As always, if you have any questions about something that I maybe didn't elaborate on enough in this video or anything else, then please feel free to leave those in the comments. All of the models I showed in this video will be linked below if you are interested in printing one for yourself. I will also do my best to list and link any of the specific filament colors that I used for the various prints as well. But that is everything, so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.